Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed. Hey, listen, and, and this is the truth. I tell you this with all humility. I don't come here to do this broadcast and send to you because I feel so knowledgeable. No, sir. I do this by the command of the Lord. Many people ask me many times, how do you do this? Every day, you just bring forth a new message. Every day, you just, and, and you've been doing this for a while and you don't get tired. It's a command. It's a command. I don't, if I do this because I want to do it, I should have been tired by now. If I do this because of the gain or profit we're going to make, I should have been tired by now. See that now? It's the truth. But hey, the Lord commands. Oh dear Lord Jesus, there are days I, I, I wake up, we're supposed to do recording, and I wake up and I'm like, man, I, I feel so tired. You know what? I don't even know what to talk about. What are we going to talk about today? I know nothing. But then I begin to ask the Lord, Lord, what are we going to talk about this week? And sometimes I even hear nothing. And I say, well, we've set the time, so let's go. Let's show up there. When we show up there, he will give us what to say. And then on my way, the Lord begins to speak to me. He said, this is what I want you to talk about. And sometimes even when I, when I get here, and it's like, Lord, you still, don't have, you still haven't said nothing. And then he begins to talk to me. Now, that is where the strength comes from. Praise God. I'm telling you the truth. When, when, he, when he gives you what to say, you, you, you have nothing but to say. You say it with all conviction. And, and that's the beauty of it. Praise God. So it, bringing the word of God to you like this puts strength in me. Number one. Number two, it helps me align with the thoughts of the spirit of God. Because I learn from this process also. So it puts me in check to grow, put me in place to learn from the Spirit of God. Because I totally deep. I don't come to share you things I have studied, I have done research, and I've come to know. No, 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 no. I'm teaching you things that the Holy Ghost have commanded me to teach. And then we teach by His Spirit. That's the teaching ministry. Teaching ministry is not because one can study and find Greek. And no, no, no. Teaching ministry is one who's yielded to the Spirit of God to communicate His Word through teaching. That's a teaching ministry. You must be yielded to the Spirit of God while you're carrying out your assignment of teaching. So I don't say words all because I have known them. So I'm now coming to tell you. No, I say words that the Spirit of God wants you to hear. That's why I keep getting all those testimonies. That, oh, look, listen, this thing happened in my house this morning. And when you were caught, you were just addressing me clearly. That's the Spirit of God. Because He knows what you're going through. He sees you. He gives me utterance. I speak as I am led to speak. Praise God. So, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this with me. Say, Father, I receive now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. And I rebuke everybody in your life right now. Anything that's going to cause a distraction to you right now, I rebuke it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be free to hear and listen to the word of God and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. So we were talking yesterday. We're still dealing with how to use the Bible. And I'll show you how people um, get into errors where these things are concerned. Now, because they don't know. Listen, we are not Bible teachers. I. We are not Bible teachers, but our teaching explains the Bible. Anyone can be a Bible teacher. Oh Yes. What does it mean to be a Bible teacher? It means put information together about the Bible and then bring it. So, so someone can look at the Bible. And that's why I say when you do that, most, you know, most Bible schools. Now... I remember one time I was contemplating on going to a Bible school because I felt, oh, I had, I had some free you know, time. So um, let, me, let me just go to a Bible school and maybe, you know, become a lecturer there. <laughs> Praise God. Hoping that the Spirit of God will let me. You know, so 
I kept praying about this and praying about this. The Lord couldn't give me direction concerning that. And then I had friends who had gone to Bible school. So I was interested. Okay, what are, what are you learning? Let's, let's share notes. Let's... And then I end. Now, when I'm in Bible school, you know, there are churches who have uh, what they call Bible school, but all they do, they, they teach people to become members of their church. The, the Bible school is skewed towards grounding you as a member of the church. But I'm talking about open Bible school, renowned Bible schools that they just discuss the Bible and, and things like that. And then I found out that I, don't know, I, I was talking to one of my friends and, I, and he actually told me, say, look, if you are here, I, I don't think you will have it good. Like, why? He said, you end up arguing with all these people. I say, why? Because all we do is arguments. Now, when he says argument, not that they all argue, argue, argue. No, the, the professor, the lecturers bring an issue. And then they start being, bringing different arguments concerning that issue. So what it does to you, it makes you knowledgeable of several arguments. But then Bible schools hardly take a stand on an issue. They put forth the argument before you and then they let you decide. But then, of course, they set exams. So when you're writing exams, you have to write according to, just like normal school. So like then, you, you just get puffed up with knowledge, but not necessarily knowledge of the truth. Of course, they teach you other things. They teach you how to preach, how to present yourself, how to prepare sermons. They teach you all those aspects of things, which, which can be good to some people. But you see, the most important thing in ministry is the spirit. Take the spirit out. And the spirit doesn't give you argument. The spirit gives you truth. So now I began to realize, oh, now I understand why the Lord is not giving me direction in this area. See, that's the truth. Because I, I, I know me. I'll get tired of that place. <laughs> Praise God. If, if, I mean, if, if something is not helping me grow indeed, when I mean grow, grow in Him. I don't have business. I get tired of such things easily. I'm telling you, I get tired of such things easily. Because I just want to fellowship with him, grow in him, and understand him better. Praise God. Not argue and argue and argue. Now, I'm not even saying this to say don't go to Bible school. Like I said, there are many good things that you can learn from there. But then everybody has his own calling. And, and you stay where God has called you to leave praise god so people misuse um they, they, they misuse scriptures because they lack understanding and you see they lack understanding of what god is doing there is there is just one storyline in the bible and if you've not seen that yet it means you don't even understand the bible the bible has just one storyline every chapter every book from Genesis to Revelation is just telling one story. And what is that one story? That God wanted a family and he started that family and, and he did everything to put that family together and achieve his purpose. And what was his purpose? His purpose was to bless the earth. That was his purpose. And when he says bless the earth, his family to be blessed. That's the story of the Bible. So first of all, you'll notice in the Bible, first it is God. Then two, it is his family. And this family is man, not angels, but man. That's the story of the Bible, God and his family. Everything in between. All the visitations of angels is because of his family. Even the coming of Jesus is because of his family. I think I told you last week. Yeah, I mentioned it last week. So that's the problem with the, the Christocentric preachers. Those who call themselves Christocentric preachers. Now they try to feel, they try to say the Bible is all about Christ. The Bible is all about Jesus. No, the Bible is not all about Jesus. Praise God. The Bible is not all about Jesus. Jesus played a role in the Bible. Jesus played roles, a role in the scripture, but he is not the end of the scripture. 
the scripture is all about you. You. It is because of you Jesus came. Come on, just put your brain to work. What did John 3, 16 say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So who's the center of that scripture? You, the world. Not the son. The, he gave his only begotten son. Now, if that's a movie, I want you to think about it. If that's a movie, picture this in a movie, that a man loved some, someone so much that he was willing to, maybe his son was kidnapped. No, no, someone, the person he loved so much was kidnapped. And then the, the one who kidnapped the person he loved so much requested a, 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 an, an exchange and said, okay, you know what we're going to do? You give us that your son for this. And the man looked, looked at the whole scenario and said, okay, I agree. He said, we're going to kill your son. All right. I want him. Take my son. Then you want to ask the question, who was more important to the man? Do you get the idea now? Do you get the idea now? That's the story of the Bible. It was because of us, Jesus came. We are not here because of Jesus. Jesus came because of us. If you don't understand this, brothers and sisters, you will not live life to the fullest. Because you find believers who are struggling daily trying to please Jesus. But we don't realize that Jesus came to help us please the Father. He teaches us. He strengthens us all so that we can please the Father. We don't struggle to please the Father. I shared a scripture to you last week. Jesus said, on that day, you will ask in my name. And I will not say that I'll pray the Father for you. But the Father himself loves you. I'll show you a scripture in John chapter 17. I come as she in the brand and I has a kid. Oh, Gibro do Zozo Zekete Lebraine, Keshen Talugo Bosukia, Mengebaro Maguzu Kutungiba. Ay. John chapter 17, I'm reading from verse. Now you can, you can read like from verse 20, but for emphasis and because of time, let me read verse 21. It says, Oh, okay, let me start from verse 22. It says, this is Jesus speaking to his father. I want to take note. He said, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them. Think about it. The glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in one, which is in us. Watch this now. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. I am Bukro Tegeba. Yai Subro, Vai Gadegini. You can't read this with understanding and be normal. You, you can't, you can't, you can't. That Jesus is praying to the Father. He said, Father, do this for me. So that the world will know. He wasn't saying, Father, love them as much as you love me. No, no, no. He was saying, hey, this thing has been there from the beginning. Now, Father, make the world know the truth. Make the world know that you have loved them as you have loved me. So, esteemed brothers and sisters, it is not because of Jesus that God loved us. No, God loved us before Jesus came. He sent Jesus to die because of the love that he had for us. He loves us so much. Does he not love Jesus? He loves Jesus. 
He, he loves Jesus because Jesus is his word. He cannot not love Jesus. You understand? Because Jesus is him. Jesus is his expression. But Jesus now is saying, hey, Lord, reveal the secret. Let everybody know it. Let everybody know. Hey, let the world know. Hey, question, does the world know this yet concerning you? If you don't understand this truth, you know nothing about scriptures, I'm sorry to say. But that's why the Holy Ghost has been given to you. To bring you into this understanding. God loves you. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.